Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and after taking a little break from uh, the Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 uh, playthroughs, I'm back with a new one. I finally decided which team I wanted to go with next. Uh, it's kind of a, a step back in a lot of ways, really. Um, but I'm taking over U the University of Alabama Birmingham Blazers, who are in Conference USA. I wasn't able to do what I wanted to with that Penn State playthrough, which basically what I wanted to do was move on to a, uh, a top conference, develop a team that's competitive year after year, that you know that's able to, to get into the Final Four tournament and uh, year after year make a run. That's, um, that was a really big struggle with Penn State. And in some ways, I think I did better than the previous coaching. But I just couldn't get over the hump. I mean, the big thing about it is the rest of that the rest of that conference just had such an advantage in recruiting and you know money and coaching and facilities that I wasn't able to to really get over the hump. I think in another couple seasons I would have because this last um, this last season with Penn State I had the my recruiting class was 34th in the nation, which, um, you know, it's not top 10 uh, by any means, but that's the best recruiting class I've ever had. I mean, that's 34th out of 270 plus, or I forget how, how many um, uh, teams you're ranked against in, in division or in, in this, you know, this division of basketball. So that would have been, I think, that would have set me up, I think, for another. I don't know, in a couple years, even two or three years, I think I could have probably built something there. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with that team after I've left it. But uh, biggest thing, you know, when you're, when you're playing this game out, a thing to, to really, I guess, be aware of, if, if you move on to that big conference, you're going to have to turn it around quick or they're going to give you the boot, and that's what happened. And so now I'm going backwards uh, into Conference USA with this UAB Blazers team and you know I think I, I still like the challenge of being able to get a team like this um, maybe get them into a like year after year uh, place where they're one of the top teams of the conference they're challenging for that conference title every year and making it into the final four tournament I mean I think that can be done um, it's just going to be difficult and and the re reason I picked the UAB Blazers is because this is this is the kind of team I was looking for next. I, I realized that I didn't want to go right now into another – to go from Penn State into another big conference like another Big Ten team or SEC team or ACC or any of those big conferences. And uh, UAB intrigued me for a little bit because of where they're at in terms of their school, and I'll show you um, – this episode, what I'm really going to do, we're, we're in off seasons over. I've got my coaching staff, and man, they are they are not good. But um, we've started recruiting. I'll go over that a little bit in this episode, and we're just kind of looking at, at the team and try to figure out what kind of strategies I want to go with. But the first thing, like I say, I liked a couple of things about this this team. Um, they are. Much like the first team I did when I started these playthroughs with uh, Draft Day Sports College Basketball, I went with Austin P in the uh, Ohio Valley Conference. It's a similar conference. I, you know, I think Conference USA, even though they may be ranked the same, I feel like Conference USA might be just a tad uh, higher in prestige, but not by much. Uh, but, you know, the UAB Blazers are kind of in the middle they're coming from history-wise. I thought they were better than than they actually were. I don't know why I thought that. I thought they were coming off like um, some 21 seasons, but they're not. First year that I started this playthrough back when I was with Austin P. They won 18. They made it to the WOL tournament, um, but then after that they struggled. And so the last three seasons, especially, but really since that first season. Uh, they haven't even been close to 500. And so I feel like, you know, I've got 
I've got some room to grow with this one, and I don't think they're as bad as Penn State was. Penn State was putting up these kind of records in a conference that was a whole lot tougher to to claw your way out of the bottom. And so hopefully that'll be good. The board, in terms of what they're looking for, is going to be similar to what um, I got at Austin P. They just want me to qualify for um, any really – NIT, I'm sure, would be a, a big jump up for this team. But, you know, don't finish last. Finish above 500. I, I, that's a little bit better goal than I, I got at Penn State. Penn State, they were wanting me to finish in the top half of the conference, make the Final Four. I mean, it was, a, you know, as you can expect from a big, you know, a, a major – team and a major conference that's what they're going to want so hopefully I can back up regroup um, and you know get this team in a, in a pretty good spot I think depends on how it goes I may not jump ship like I did last year I may just um, or, or you know the last time where I put three seasons into Austin P. got him into the final four one one game in the final four tournament Got him into another um, – the last season I was there, I think I got him into another uh, postseason tournament. I figured, hey, I'm, I'm on a roll. I might as well take the next challenge. Depends on how this goes. I may stay around and see if I can, like I, like I said, make this a perennial powerhouse in the Conference USA and um, improve their prestige a lot. But uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. So I wanted to look at the team first this sh- – kind of show you what I'm going to be working with. It's not that great uh, for sure. You, you can see we only have two players with uh, three-star ratings or, or above. Well, three-star ratings. And I think, yep, they are both seniors. So this is a, a true, I think, rebuild situation. But one of the things that does look good about this team, and I don't know why they're going this way, but we've got four centers on scholarship um two of them are freshmen so it this might be a situation where i decide to redshirt one of these guys maybe ryan white who's got four star potential even though he's a two and a half star right now or um dan anderson who's just a three star potential um it might be a good idea to redshirt him but Power forward is kind of slim. Um, We've got a walk-on at power forward, so one of these guys could probably take up, you know, cover the slack there and and get placed in the power forward position in the depth chart. Um, Other than that, though, there's there's not a whole lot good about this team. We've got four small forwards, but two of those are seniors, and uh, one of them is my highest rated player, three out of three star current potential with four, or three star current and four potential with, you know, as a senior, he's not going to develop any more than that, really, but um, the holes that I've got on this team, I I think are really going to be Outside, you know, with a guard play, uh, even though we've got a shooting guard here who's pretty decent. I looked at his player stats, and he wasn't even a starter last year. So um, I don't know if that's going to be bad or, or, or not, but you can see two seasons ago he was a starter, 26 games, averaged just seven points. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be good enough for uh, – for a shooting guard position. If, if he can't really outplay that, we're going to struggle because I, I feel like, once again, I'm probably going to be um, running an offense that's going to be heavy on outside shooting. But um, we'll just see. I mean, at least, uh, let's see, power forwards. Man, that's that's going to be a struggle unless, like I say, unless I put one of these guys either uh, – Maybe Daniels can be the starter at center, and then he didn't start last year either. Um, let me see who um, – Brandon Matthews, did he start last year? Yeah, he was the starter last year. Um, 
wow, it's going to be, it's going to be tough to figure that out. But that's what, you know, that's what I'll be working on. If not in this episode, then, then offline, um, I'll probably do this episode to get kind of familiar with the team and do a little recruiting and then come back to start the season. We haven't got to our schedule yet, so I don't know if that's something we're going to do this episode uh, or not, uh, but we'll see. Um, what I wanted to do, too, is I wanted to show something here that I noticed on my coaching. And the coaching in, in here is really bad. Um, I do have a decent scout, for what it's worth, Troy Jones, who actually... Uh, was with us at Penn State. I, I, he he moved on with me from Penn State, so that may not be a great thing or maybe good or bad. But uh, recruiting, I think David Spahn even, yeah, he was with us at Penn State. Uh, Clay Perry, though, is new. He was a Georgia Tech assistant, but he's just not rated too highly. And it's one of the things I haven't been able to really figure out Um how the, the coaches um, develop in this game. It seems like, you know, the three seasons that I've been with the previous teams, I haven't seen any kind of movement on these star ratings. Um, and so I I was assuming that that wasn't going to be a static rating, that these guys would develop, but I just haven't seen it. And, and I know we've got some longtime players of the game who, who comment a lot, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that, uh, because it's something I, I just, I'm just wondering if, if I'm looking at this wrong, if maybe I'm going to have to start putting more money into the um, assistance, because it just, I felt like my plan anyway with, with assistance has been hire somebody who's maybe rated a little bit better in one category over another, assigning to that category year after year, and Eventually, he's going to develop. He's going to get better at it, but I'm not really seeing that. Uh, but one other thing I thought that was pretty interesting for for myself, uh, the way things are moving here, I've actually moved up a little bit in a couple of um, categories. When I started this playthrough way back with Austin P, I was three stars in every category, I believe. I was just, I set myself at the default average ratings. And so I've kind of um, improved a little bit in defensive concepts and player development. Um, so I'm hoping that that player development, especially, is going to start playing out, you know, paying off for me. Especially with a team like this, where you know I'm going to have to, you know, based on the talent level on this team right now, I'm going to have to recruit and develop my own um, good players, you know, three star and above players, because there's just not going to be any on this team as I'm taking it over, but uh, that's a positive I've noticed, so for what it's worth. Uh, but going back to the uh, dashboard, I want to start off a little bit in recruiting. I've gone through and, and uh, got the scouting reports, gone through that part of this off season, and I've also... Um, put most of the players that I want to have on my call and watch list for, for the start anyway, I've assigned those. And I'm kind of looking at where we're at as a team going into next year. I think the two biggest things that I see are going to be uh, areas for us um, are going to be point guard. I mean, DJ Fisher is more than likely, I, th I think he's a walk-on. Did I, did I read that? Yeah, he's a walk-on. We really need a, a point guard, and it might be that we have to go with Rose here uh, if he's got any kind of passing. Yeah, he's got some passing ability as a junior. Uh, he's a starter two years in a row. Uh, man, does he – you know, I may have to put him as, as the point guard uh, just to get through because the only guy we have on scholarship is um, – nah, hit him again – is Brooks, who's a sophomore, rated just two and a half stars. Um, I don't see a whole lot of upside to this guy. He's a pretty decent outside shooter. He's going to be about average, I think, in terms of um, things like court IQ, passing, ball handling. 
I don't think I'm going to be able to rely on him as a, a true point guard. So, and he's and, and he's also he's got a poor relationship. He wants solid minutes. Um, it's just you know when you look at his scouting report, for instance, you know his shot mechanics need work. Uh, he's not very good defensively, um, and he's he, he lacks passing skills, and so that's going to be that's going to be to his really disadvantage playing point guard. So that means I think point guard is is a must for next year. Um, shooting guard looks to be a must, and then small forward simply because we've got. Two of these guys, seniors, uh, are my best small forwards. And really, back behind them, we've got a junior who's only, uh, well, he's three and a half star potential, but coming off really a poor season in terms of, you know, the amount of minutes he got and what he gave us for that. I mean, nine and a half minutes under two points a game, not, not too good. And then point power forward, I might be able to, depending on how some of these guys play, uh, if I go that route where I decide to go with a center, one of these centers, in more of a power forward role, then um, with three scholarships available, I really think I need to stick with these outside guys. And so that means point guard, shooting guard, small forward is where I'm going to put the majority of my efforts into recruiting. So let's go ahead get started on that. I'm just going to probably, the way I like to handle this early on in the season, I'm just going to go with um, position by position. Usually you can make like 10 call, uh, 10, uh, what is it, watch 10 video clips a week and um, make enough calls that you, you talk to maybe five plus guys a week, something like that. So I'm going to start at uh, point guard. We don't have too many people interested, as you can see, but I'm just gonna start from the be beginning. Isaac Fox, easily the best recruit in this region. I gotta give him a chance, you know, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if he has any interest. Probably won't, yeah. So he's not gonna give any time. And, and mainly I'm sticking right now, starting off with guys in our region, Georgia, Alabama. That's pretty much it. I've got a few guys out of state, but I think this is going to be a team that's going to be really tough to get some out of state recruits to that are, you know, that are that good. So right off the bat, we're not getting any of these guys interested. Um, this guy's pretty good regionally. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give him a chance and. So I'm just going to go ahead and, well, I'm not going to remove him yet. I'm not going to remove those other Alabama guys, but I will, will remove him. So now we're getting to guy in state. This should be one that we've got more of a chance to talk to, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really seeing it. Let me at least watch film on this guy. Uh, I wonder if I could host him. Yeah, he will come to the school, so that might give give him some interest, if nothing else. And now we got some other Georgia guys here. Man, nobody's interested. Um, so I want to go what I like to go with first: school location. And so he's already he's already gone, but this should at least give him a little bit of interest in us. The fact that he would answer the call. Here's another one. I want to watch film to this guy and then Angelo Banks. And they uh they are really it's gonna to be tough to get anybody interested in this one, in this team. <clears throat> so I wanna go I don't want to go to these guys just yet. So let's go back over to shooting guard. See if we got anybody here. We got at least we got one guy who's warm. Uh, I'm gonna try this first guy, you know. 
see if a is interested. So school location. Again, he, he is, you know, at least he's interested. I'm going to watch film. And I'm going to see if he'll he'll come to the he, he will he will come. So I'm going to watch film on the rest of these Alabama guys who are there's a lot of three star Alabama guys here and shooting guards. So I'm hoping that some of those will um, will at least have some interest. I can also host Charles Hunter. Uh, might as well do that while I can. All right, so that puts me through everything I can do. And, and uh, well, I've got one left on watching film. So let's let's move over just to get something started in the small forwards. This guy, um, the best in-state recruit from small forward. I've got a, a guy here, two stars. He might be the best recruit. Um, interested in the school right now. I mean, this is somebody who I could probably work with. He's got pretty decent numbers in, in high school, good size. Um, I wouldn't, you know, with with this team, I probably wouldn't have to, or I, I wouldn't want to disregard or, or discard some of these two-star recruits because that might be, at the end, end of the day, that might be the best recruits I'm going to get. Now in power forward, um, Again, I've got a, a two-star here from Arkansas who's kind of interested. The best in-state recruit I was able to find is a three-star guy. He's got good, pretty good size for, for power forward. And then center, I think we're okay with. I'm not even going to worry with it because, um, and I say okay, not that we've got any great-looking players, but we have at least some depth at center, so I don't think it's going to be too too bad if we don't get a center recruit in. But the thing that um, I also wanted to look at was strategy. Um, I, I've seen, there was a, a good video that I think it was done by, um, there's a sports management, GM Games, I think is the name of their channel, uh, YouTube channel, but um, there was a good video they put out and it dealt with you know some some tips on recruiting and things like that and and just the game in general and one of the things that stuck with me from that is you know when you're taking over a young team if you've got three years which looks to be what you're going to get from most of these teams uh, when when you first hire on even with Penn State I got three years out of it but. A good plan with a young team is to stick with maybe two offenses um, and then just, you know, put a lot of time into those two offenses. And over time, you know, your younger players are going to get more used to those those type of, you know, running the, the set offenses that you have. And you can improve, you know, you can improve this percentage they get more proficient at as they get more proficient at it, and you can have a lot of success that way. So, I think that's a good plan for this team. It looks like triangle um, triangle offense might not be something I could change. I know I was running five out at Penn State, and if you wanted to just get some descriptions if you're playing the game, this is a pretty handy little tool tip here. Uh, this drop down, if you go to say motion, it's going to tell you what you need on your team or what you need from the players on your team to be successful with that type of offense. So for the motion offense, you're going to have to have players who have, are able to basically, you know, move a lot, move around a lot, set up, I guess, on the, on the post, you know, uh, get in some good shot positions. I, I don't know if that's what this team's going to be like, uh, or if that's where our strengths are. But it's set for 70% in terms of strategy, so I might be okay with that. Flex um, flex is the, is the one where you really need good ball handlers and passers. We didn't really have that at Penn State. I don't see it from what I've looked at on this team. I'm not really seeing it here either. So that leaves like the high post. Um, when you don't have a really big team, Inside, I think this is probably 
the best offense you can run. I just don't know if I want to run it like 73% of the time. So I'm, I, you know, and, and then I look at the triangle. Um, I think that's, that's fine leaving that at 10. I don't know that I want to do five out as much. But I, I think with the way I'm recruiting, I'm going to, I'm probably going to want to go with that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it around just a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to go 20 on motion, uh, at least for this start of this first season. I'm going to back this one off to 55, and I think, uh, well, I guess I have to hit enter. So that gives me 75, 85. I think I'm going to put, with the 5 out, You know, I, I know this team. It doesn't seem to have very good guard play, so I am I am a little struggling struggling a little bit with that. I mean, I could also go higher on triangle. Shuffles just right out. Um, I mean, you're going to have to have a team that's got a lot of good passers and ball handlers, and I just don't see that from this team. Uh, Princeton is. Again, good passing is crucial. So I think, you know, I, I, I don't know that five out is what I want to do either because I don't know that we're that good yet. So motion, high post. I think I think I'll go a little bit higher, back higher on high post. So that's 80. And I think uh, I'm going to go 20 with this triangle. And I don't want to... You know, I don't want to go with too many, like I say, I don't want to go with too many here to um, to kind of overload the team, really. You know, they're young. I don't want to have them trying to learn four or five different offensive sets. I want to keep it pretty basic. On the defensive strategies, I really, I don't know about a 2-3 zone. Um, so if, if you go here, look at the 2-3 zone, um, If you're playing a team against a team that's that's really good outside, I don't I don't like that too much. I, I prefer from past seasons, especially when I was with Austin P. I like this one two two zone. Um, you know, you can still give up some I guess high post and corners at saying, but you know, those can be pretty high uh, or low percentage shots to to make for an opposing team. I would really rather put more time into this one two two zone and then man to man for sure um, you know that's that's a big thing there too let me let me show you what the problem is you know if I decide to go man to man so I'm gonna have to have um, I'm gonna have to have a lot of strong defenders. And I'm already seeing, you know, like if I'm looking at my potential starters here, if I even went with Brooks, for instance, um, he is not a very good defensive player. That was one of the profile things about him. Um, he doesn't pick up many steals defensively. And then the next guy, um, this guy is, is aggressive. But... You know, he's not that great at turnovers. And you can see his defense is really bad. And then going further, um, this guy, defensive ability, not that great. Um, another one, not that great. Uh, sh these are the shooting guards. I mean, he's a freshman. He's got a lot of room to develop, hopefully. But even, you know, I see the four-star potential, but I'm not really seeing a whole lot of potential from this guy in terms of outside shooting, free throw shooting. I do see that he's got potential with rebounding and, and defensive ability um, and stealing, um, 
for what it's worth, but man, not much in ball handling either. So um, here's a guy who's got good, you know, he's definitely going to be a starter, if not point guard, then, um, you know, I could see Mark Stewart here being, being the point guard on this team at this point. Hardwick, small forward, uh, defensive ability, just not good. So I, I feel like to go back to the strategy based on that, man on man is really going to be hard. So I think I, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with what they're doing here with man to man. And I'm even, I'm going to back it down just a little bit. And I'm going to put some, uh, let me see. I think, I think I want to do the zone play that way. And, um, And in terms of, well, do I need to back that up too? Because I probably need to to do a, uh, when I'm doing a pressure defense. So here's what I'm going to do one more time. So I'm going to do 40-40. And then I'm going to put a 1-2-2 two, two press, put some time into that. And so that should give us uh, 100, if that's how this is working, that should give us all the assigned time we can we can put strategy wise and then now I'll have to go to the practice plan and uh, adjust it based on that so I want to put motion high post triangle uh, these are fine down here man-to-man -man, um, so I'm wanting to put man-to-man -man, I'm just gonna move that down to 5%. We're not going to use it much. I'm going to move this down to 25 and what 15 remaining and then I'll put that into 10 and then 5 on the press. And save changes. We're we're primarily going to run this high post for now. So um, we'll see if if that works out for us in those first games of the off season anyway, or not off season, but uh, before we get into the conference. And that is one other thing I was meaning to look at too, in terms of the conference um, that we're in. Let me make sure that changed. Sorry, I can't remember if I even, um, yeah, so these, these settings changed. But if you look at the conference that we're in, Uh, there's going to be some names here that you might, you know, just a, even a casual basketball fan could probably uh, remember. I mean, Old Dominion, for instance, I think they've, they're a pretty good basketball uh, school. Uh, Charlotte, Marshall, uh, I think Marshall, didn't they have a good run not too long ago in, in the in the tournament, the actual tournament? But this is on a line, I guess, with the OVC, but I think these are probably bigger schools than the, OVC, than the, than the OVC. Um, I don't know if I, I wish I could see the standings. Uh, let me see if it'll show me history. Mm, season recaps, and Conference USA. It's only going to show me uh, my team. Uh, Almanac, maybe. Let me see. Conference USA. Uh, not available in data. Team records. So this is going to be from that 2019 season, the first time I started playing this game. So it's looking like, you know, these are the top teams here in the uh, division or in the conference. Uh, Texas, El Paso, Western Kentucky, Old Dominion, North Texas. 
you can see UIB pretty much at the bottom half. Uh, not too far from some of these guys in the middle, but if I look at the uh, conference championships, two to Old Dominion, two to uh, UTEP, Texas, El Paso, North Texas, and Western Kentucky, one apiece. If I look at Final Four appearances, you know, actually, uh, so two of these teams made it one season, the way I'm reading this. I mean, that's seven appearances in six seasons. So one season, at least, there were two teams that came out of this conference. So that's something I never saw it in the OVC. So that could be good. You got North Texas at one, and then these these other teams two apiece. Um, Final four, gosh, I, I would be, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not going to see any any uh, Final four. Well, Old Dominion made it to the 16, so that's pretty good. Final round of 16. So NIT appearances again seven. You have Marshall, North Texas, so. For the most part, the same teams who who were winning the conference championships. NIT championships nine. CHI appearances. You got five teams that made it there. Um, championships none. And then I think WOL is the last. A lot of appearances here. Uh, so <clears throat> the WOL. I forget what I didn't change that that one. Um, those I think those two tournaments, pre postseason tournaments, I didn't change their names in this database when I started, so they're just kind of a generic name, but that's pretty good too. I mean, if I were to look at the OVC, for instance, uh, in the same time period, not as many, just two teams. Um, three teams in the CHI tournament, and then NIT, just four. So. Like I was saying, I think this is a step up from that from that initial um, run that I had with Austin P. For what it's worth, but if I look at the individual teams, so looks like Old Dominion. Um, I'll take a look at them first. So I'm not I'm not going to be seeing their uh, scouting yet because we haven't started playing them. I guess. Uh, who else do we got? So Texas, El Paso. Yeah, just, you know, a few seniors, they probably got the same makeup. But, man, they're having a lot of, uh, not a lot of happiness on that team. And for their history, they're coming off a pretty decent Run. Uh, I don't think they won the championship, the tournament, or uh, excuse me, the the conference championship last year. But uh, they've had two back to back here in twenty and twenty one. So I guess I can't see the scouting yet until we start playing them. But uh, that was one thing I was hoping to see. But at least give you a good idea of of where this conference is. It's a step up. I'm. I'm positive now looking at that history it's a step up from uh, from the OVC and that's you know that's at least I was looking for something like that so let's go ahead finish uh, this week see what else is coming up next in terms of the um, we're gonna have some recruiting coming on and I'd like to get to the schedule before I close this one but I don't close this episode but I don't know that I'm gonna get there yet so we got some recruiting visits here. Charles Hunter didn't think the visit was worthwhile. Same with Laurent Green. All three of them. Um, so, you know, looking at the recruits again, um, I I don't know if I can do anything here. But um, so point guards, you know, this guy. Did I get anything from him? No. Um, so Cedric Williams, unfortunately, didn't like the school visit. I'm going to call Patrick Anyon. 
I uh, want to see a school location. That's that's a big one. Team prestige, not a big concern. Conference prestige is not a big concern. Program facilities is very important. Um, playing time is is important. Academics is very important. Um, so I'm going to see if this guy will visit as well. Uh, at least we've got him interested. It's going to cost more to bring him. But I, that's why I, I saved a lot of money for recruiting, probably more than I'll need with this team. But I just wanted to make sure we got, got enough that we could. Uh... Now, I think I already called him. I just wanted to have enough money there for, for uh, recruits because I was, you know, that's one thing I did with Penn State is that last season when I got so good, I used as much as I could. I mean, I, I didn't really have a whole lot of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a whole lot of uh, money even left over, I, I think. I'm going to scout him live. Has he, is he, okay, Isaac Fox, did he visit? Let me double check. No. So... I think I want to see if he'll come. And then I want to move on to small forward. I, I, I want to put some time into small forwards if I can. So Jason Miller. Uh, school location, very important. Playing time, very important. Uh, team prestige, bottom, that's good. Uh, program facilities is very important. So, Jason Miller, I think, is another guy I can hopefully get to visit. Watch film, host recruit. Uh, I'm going to watch film on some of these guys down here at the bottom. And then moving on, say, to sh back to shooting guard. Deion Davis, watch film, scout live. Larry Harris, scout live, watch film. And go ahead and advance. So the Superstar Camp. So Deion Davis, National Camps. We didn't really go to many camps either. I didn't want to put a whole lot of money into that. Um, I'm pretty sure we didn't have anybody at the Las Vegas review. And we got more recruiting. I don't know that I can go back to recruiting. So let's um, So we're in the evaluation. Car recruit, host recruit. Okay. Yeah, we're still in that previous week as a reset. So we got two guys who visited. Looks like they didn't really change their impression. Grant McCleary, uh, this is somebody I'll probably want to work at shooting guard anyway. Uh, so Jason Miller, not worthwhile, not worthwhile, not worthwhile. So um, we're moving back again to point guard just to see what I'm what I'm starting to look like here. I'm not getting any of these guys interested. So I'm probably gonna have to, to do a little reset here on the point guard. And uh, I mean Steve Pierce, we're on his list, you know, uh, and he's he's moving up for what it's worth, but he's way down there on the on the list. Um, if I looked at full recruit list, and I'm gonna let me let me remove some of these guys. One of the things that happened last year is I, um, you know, these guys aren't going to be interested. 
if they've visited and they're not interested, you know, uh, I'll keep him on here because he's in state. You know, it might get some some uh, interest later in the season. But let's look at the four recruit list and start looking at Alabama again. And so Cedric Williams, will he even talk to me now? Uh, I mean, I could pitch him. I could visit him and pitch him on playing time and location. And because he's not concerned with prestige, so you know that might, you know, that might be an air factor. Because uh, with this team, if he's a good recruit, he's going to get playing time. But looking down the list, if there's anybody, I mean, you have to go down to the one stars to have anybody interested in this in this team. Patrick Anyan visited, but you know that's not a lot of in-state recruits in the three-star category, which for this team, uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And, and even with the recruiting, that's one thing. If you play the game, you'll, you'll know um, those stars are going to change as soon as they get on your team anyway. But I kind of look at, you know, I like to look at a mix. Uh, for instance, if I'm going for a point guard, you know, I like to see somebody who's got like this Ammons guy, 12 and 12 plus assists a game. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty good. Well, that's that's incredible. But I would rather have that kind of play out of a point guard than a lot of scoring. But um, just not seeing too many good recruits in state and point guard. Uh, so what are we at right now? It's still the summer camps. I'm not going to uh, spent a whole lot of time this episode going through these, but that's where I'm at right now. So I'll finish up the preseason and come back next episode. What I want to do is is start like I've done in the past, um, send through the majority, if not all, of the uh, uh, pre-conference schedule when when that becomes available. I'm probably going to shoot for either balanced or really easy. Um, uh, schedule because I don't think this team's going to be ready for too big of a challenge, uh, but we'll see how that plays out. But as always, I appreciate the support, the interest in this one, and um, it, you know, if you, if you enjoy the episode, like that helps my channel get a little bit more notice. Um, appreciate the comments as well. I try to read and respond to everyone that I get uh, in time. Uh, I'm not I'm not a dedicated YouTuber. I have a lot of other things going on, so. Um, I try to do this, you know, weekly as much as I can, but uh, I do respond to all the comments that I get, and I appreciate them. But thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next episode.